and welcome to our gurus out there following us. I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. We're excited. We got a little different show for you tonight, so to speak. We actually have a guest host who is going to be uh, basically uh, managing the interview with our guest speaker uh, this evening. We have an exciting new um, technology in wound care that I think this is going to kind of, this could this could be a game changer. Seriously, um, as I kind of said in the promo. So I am very excited uh, to bring this information to you guys. Uh, however, before I get and bring on our guest host, I want to real quickly just bring up our fall classes. Um, I will let you know that there are dates available now up on our website at sharpdebridement.com. Uh, so uh, locations and dates are up for Richmond, Los Angeles, Chicago, Dallas, and Denver. So. I would encourage you guys to sign up early, get your early bird price, and uh, we will look forward to seeing you guys at the up and coming debridement courses. So uh, with that, I'm going to bring up our, our guest host for the evening. Welcome, Nancy, uh, to uh, Wunker Gurus. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Bill. Excellent. Well, we are thanks. glad. I'm excited. It's kind of giving me a break. I get to kind of sit back and... Uh, not really do anything, just kind of man the tech in the background and kind of let you host this. So uh, with that, Nancy, I'm going to turn this, turn me off screen and let you take over the rest of the evening. You enjoy and okay. good luck to you. Okay. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Nancy Morgan. Some of you may know me, some of you may not. Um, I'm the past co-founder of the Wound Care Education Institute and Wild on Wounds Productions. And also, I just started my own business and it's called guess what nancy morgan wound care i just made it easy that way we won't forget it <laughs> i am so thrilled of two things number one i'm on the board with wound care gurus i uh, have a board seat with them and i'm just so thrilled and excited because i can bring great topics to you guys using this wound care gurus platform and that's what i have planned i got lots of goodies planned for you this year and i have an exciting guest now, um, this gentleman and I worked together years ago, and I kind of lost track of him, you know, maybe during the pandemic. And it looks like uh, he's got some things that we need, to, we need to hear about. And these are important things that are for clinicians. And that's who's watching today. And that's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in anything that's just gonna help clinicians do their job better. So I'm gonna introduce you to my friend, Barry. There he is. <laughs> There he is, Barry Wolfenson, and he is going to tell tell us what is going on. So, Barry, what has been going on during the pandemic? I kind of lost track of you, like I said. Anything <laughs> new happening? Yeah, you. Uh, we were we were both a little quiet there uh, for 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 a beat or two. Um, but you know, as as things got really bad in the pandemic, and 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 the and it started to really change. You know, late March, April, May. Um, it started to occur to me as I reached out to old friends who are out in the field, um, sales reps and other uh, company representatives, uh, you know, who, who normally make their business by meeting with clinicians that they're not allowed, they were not allowed into facilities any longer. And so with Zoom booming and telehealth was finally having its day in the sun, it occurred to me to wonder, is anybody building a platform that instead of focusing on connecting clinicians with patients, uh, connecting clinicians to industry, a vital component of, of healthcare. And I started looking around a bit and it turns out that there really wasn't. And so I got together with an old friend of mine who was a vendor uh, of ours at, at Derma Sciences, a, a good uh, Brit named uh, Phil Andrews and uh, asked him to help me to look. I basically called him up one day and I was like, hey, I think my Google is broken. Can you check out on your Google and see if you could find any company that's building a platform that would connect clinicians with industry? And he couldn't as well. So we put a little team together and started uh, meeting with some companies, clinicians, field reps, and hearing themes again and again and again that convinced us that it was something that, that should be built. And so we went ahead and put together a company and fast forward a year, we've we've just launched our, our app specifically into, into wound care. And I'm, I'm thrilled to be, be able to be here to tell you all about it. Wow, awesome. Well, everyone that's listening tonight, this is for clinicians, okay? This is to help us do our job better. And um, 
Barry, take it away. Tell us about this company. What is, what is the name of it? How do I pronounce that for starters? <laughs> it's called it's called Vtail. You know, in, in the thick of it uh, dur during a, a COVID, that was the original concern: was how do we put clinicians and sales reps. And when I say sales reps, I mean the clinical support, reimbursement support, sales support, medical, whatever it is. How do we put them face to face where there could be some continuity in the communications uh, uh, that they would typically have? And so given that it was video focused um, and sometimes in industry, they'll call like a sales call, a detail call. We sort of squish those things together, video detail into uh, into detail. And, you know, the basic gist of it was what we were hearing was it's difficult for clinicians, um, especially in wound care, big market, fragmented market, lots of players, lots of companies, lots of products. And let's face it, there's a lot of transiency uh, in this business on, on, on the rep side. So there's not a, 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 a huge level of confidence uh, on the part of clinicians that they know exactly who their reps are. You know, yelling, "Hey, do you guys know who the rep is at?" And you know, seeing seeing the, no. uh, you know, seeing the um, the 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 stack of business cards or the business card that's like taped to the fridge somewhere. There's this sense that even if I make the effort to figure out who the rep is at Company X that I want to contact to get this piece of information, it's going to be hard to find them. Maybe I'll get in touch with them or not. And if I do, there's a pretty solid chance that they're going to tell me they haven't been with that company for three or four months and they really don't know who the new rep is, right? Because there's just a lot of movement. Yeah. So so that was the, the thing that we were mainly seeking to address is can we use digital technology to build out a, mat, a platform that has a matching system that a clinician can go in, see the companies that they normally deal with, click on the company and have an always up to date, personalized, automated, to the, down to the local level, their rep, their sales rep, their reimbursement specialist, their clinical specialist that they would normally see in that territory. So a clinician you know, on VTail in St. Louis versus mm -hmm. a clinician from Miami would see different people even from the same company on their app. It's their direct regular uh, rep. And it's always up, it's always updated. So that was mm -hmm. the original kind of impetus to, to build a platform like that and then you know layer stuff onto it. But the theme that we heard that really for us was our aha, this is what we're gonna do, and this is why how it's gonna work and why clinicians will like it, is mm -hmm. what we were hearing from them. We actually heard the same exact thing from companies and clinicians. Companies were telling us you know, everything is digital now, sales, promotion, everything. And we're trying all these artificial intelligence, intelligent, smart, automated message systems, you know, to interact and promote to clinicians. And we're getting no engagement from them. And on the clinician side, they were telling us, you know, setting aside the horror that was COVID, that during all that, they felt completely inundated with digital promotional stuff from every angle, like a harrowing experience when they open up their email boxes in the morning. And so they were guiding us, clinicians that we've talked to from, from, from wound care, 50 or 60 mm -hmm. of them over the course of the last year, saying to us, if you make a great platform that does all of these wonderful things, but it's just the next platform where, you know, if I register and I come on, a week from then, I'm going to have a million messages from all these companies, you know, sending yeah. me their stuff that I don't care about. I'm just going right. to delete them and I'm out. So that was <laughs> at the moment we said, all right, this is what we got to do. We're going to make this platform, instead of it being from the traditional perspective of the company viewing clinicians as a target for promotional stuff, instead, uh -huh. we would go from the perspective of the clinician viewing the company as a collaborative resource for them. And so the way that we did that is we make it in what we consider to be a clinician friendly environment. So as a clinician, when you register, uh, when you download the app and register, you give us certain information, you know, where, you know, is the zip code of, of your primary uh, location where you work? What type of site of care is it? Do you work in a VA? Do you work in a wound clinic? Do you work at a hospice? Do you, where, where, what type of site of care? Um, oh. What products are you interested in? And information like that, based on that, you come into our app and okay. you get served up all of the companies that are a match specifically for you. So even though we're only launched in wound care right now, in theory, down the road, if we also had orthopedics and 
urology and oncology and every other ology you know that exists <laughs> yeah. you're a wound care, but you're a wound care nurse right mm -hmm. you'll only see things that are to you you'll see everything it's your only company we define as a match and by a match what that means is that in that company there's at least one employee that perfectly matches your registration criteria. They sell into your type of site of care. They sell the products that you're interested in. They sell to your zip code, that kind of thing. So you mm -hmm. see all of those companies. When you do that, you're invisible. So you'll see we have 25 companies on our platform, Convitech, all the way down to small, single technology uh, companies. First one that came on board was uh, Moleculite. So shout out to them for, uh, oh, for bringing us in, in, the, in the early we days. Like <laughs> yeah. So, you know, all of those companies are on our platform. As a clinician, when you first come in, you could see all of them, but none of them can see you. You have the control to select which companies do you want to for them to see you so that you okay. can have communications with them. So once you select a company, you're no longer invisible to them. The reps that are a perfect match for you, now mm -hmm. you will show up in their database and they can contact you and, and you can contact them. So you okay. really do get to control everything. It's a safe environment. We take it a step further. And as a clinician, when you're contacting or this communication happens, you can mm -hmm. text them, you could phone call them, you could video call them. And it all happens instantly. It's not like Zoom. It's like FaceTime. Right. You put a button and their phone is ringing. You could do all those things. They could only text you. So it's not going to be where your phone is 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 ringing off the hook. And I, and I would also add that in this patient uh, clinician friendly environment, you never have to give your personal contact information. So they'll never okay. have your email, won't have your cell phone. It just all works internally uh, via uh, the app. Okay. Now, if um, what is this an app where I would just go to my app store like I would like any app that I have, and then yeah, just yeah. find it's really cool. so I could I could do that. Yeah. Right now, yeah. people that are listening can download the app. Now, is this going to cost me something? Because I want to know before I download this thing. I, I don't want to. Yep. Nope. It's on. It's on. Whether you've got an iPhone or an Android, just go to the uh, the the app store. Look up Vtail. I can see it hanging in in, in the background oh. for me. Um, and uh, you know, type in Vtail Healthcare app or whatever, and it'll show up, and you can download it. Okay. The way All our right. business the way our business model works is that the companies pay for the service. So every rep that's on there ultimately will pay, the company will pay a fee per each rep that's on there, but clinicians, always free. So we can all sign up right now, download the thing and put our contact information, which is not a lot. We don't put too much personal stuff, zip code no. and stuff to kind of figure out who my local rep is. Now I'm in Chicago right now. So that would kind of pull the Chicago area reps. That's exactly right. Connected yep. to me. And so then yep. when I go and do rounds at Northwestern tomorrow, then and if I needed a question answered or something, I could possibly, that, that's how it would work in theory. That is, that is exactly how it works. Well, nice. And what they'll find again is that we've got, while we have 25 companies, we don't have every company. And okay. so kind of what we're hoping here in these early days, we really just, so our, you know, from a model perspective, we bring, bring in all of these companies and then attract them attract the clinicians by having these uh, uh, companies uh, in there. And so now we're turning our focus uh, towards clinicians. You'll see a lot of advertisers. It's going to get annoying, I think, in the next couple of months, uh, the amount of times that wound care clinicians are going to see and hear and read about uh, VTAIL. Um, we haven't even turned on that, that spigot yet, but it is going to, and I do apologize in advance, you're going to see a lot of, of us. But um, we're hoping that, that that you come in and as you have a good experience, you know, with this platform, even though all of the companies that you use might not necessarily be on there, that you help us by telling your rep, hey, why are you guys not on VTAIL, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, we think that we're not far uh, from having all of, uh, of the major companies on our platform. And once we do, uh, or at least not, you know, uh, uh, most of them, then it really is this... Yeah perfectly valuable thing on both sides of the equation for clinicians and the companies. And, and we really think that we could blow it up and have, you know, th th there's almost no reason why, why you wouldn't want to be on, on VTAIL at that point. Well, that's what I'm thinking. So like if it's, if it's free to all the clinicians and we're all downloading it, it's just going to be a matter of time for the companies to jump over. And that's kind of what I was thinking. And then also just to add on, to, you know, with, with the pandemic and stuff, we learned a lot of different stuff as it relates to live meetings. And so I think some of that will go away. I know that in some clinics you can get in and, some, and you can't. And some, some you can and some you can't. So, um, but 
there may be a day very soon that they may just do away with all that. And this is always going to be a way to continue to communicate. Honestly, so this, this, was, plan, right? this was the, the you know, the, the, selfishly for our for our little company here, this was the best news that we've gotten over the last four or five months since the vaccines have really uh, come out. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, we're, we're hitting good numbers because uh, as we were developing this application and people were investing money. And thankfully, we've had pretty uh, good access to uh, to capital from from great investors. Um, we internally were not entirely sure what was going to happen post COVID. Mm -hmm. But the good news for us, at least, is that and it's funny, you know, because we have feelers out in, in many different areas of let's broadly healthcare. So I'm talking mm -hmm. veterinary clinics, dental clinics, and mm -hmm. obviously, you know, the, the you know, the uh, wound care clinics and hospitals and, and, and things like that. And what we're hearing uniformly across the board is that because of uh, COVID and the experience that all these facilities had, they've grown acclimated to not liking the, all the reps teaming throughout their facilities. And well, that's so, what I'm hearing, yeah. Yeah, and so I agree with you. And I think, and, 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 and the companies, the companies I think um, are, are, are saying to us, and they're not happy about it because it really does change their you know, fundamental uh, business model, but they are seeing it and they're reporting it back to us. No one expects that it's going to go back to the way that it was before. So yeah, having a system like this, we don't, we don't think that we're replacing in-person calls. The, the, the strength of a relationship between a rep and a clinician is always going to be the, the most important, you know, denominator in the equation of, of how effective uh, of, a, of, a, of a, you know, of a relationship, you know, is that. Yeah. We provide an automated directory that just makes it simple that if you are a clinician, you don't ever have to worry, know, think about, be aware of changes in a company, anything. You just open up the app, you click on your company and there's your rep or reps and that's it. And we just feel that you know this will take out the friction and really what we believe. And we did a little bit of research. If you're familiar with um, um, the 3S uh, consulting group, uh, they uh, did a market research study uh, for us that basically it was slightly over 300 wound care nurses specifically. And we asked them the key questions we asked were, number one, how often regularly, say pre you know, pandemic, how often would you as the as the nurse reach out to your rep at a company? Right. And the answer was 28 percent said, yeah, I do. I reach out to them. The other 72 percent said, I never do. I just wait until they show up. It's difficult to find them. I have no confidence that they're the current rep and they always show up every month or whatever. Right. We asked the ones that said yes, that, you know, how often do, that do you do it or not? And they said, yes, we asked them, how often do you? And they said, you know, monthly or so. So then we said, well, what if there were a system where right on your phone, you had an app, had your the companies that you like, you just click on the company and there's your current rep. And it might be a different rep than it was last week because they split their territories or they bought another company. You don't have to know that. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Whoever is there that day, that's, that's your rep to contact. If you had that, and, and, and I would add, um, uh, Nancy, we, we have a feature on our uh, platform called broadcasting, which basically oh. answers the question of, I'm a clinician, you know, VTAIL is sort of painting this picture, this promise of instant, you know, ability to contact a rep. What if I do really want to talk to a rep right now about something I'm about to do? I have some samples and I want to make sure, is this the right patient? There's some necrotic mm -hmm. material on the wound. I'm not sure if this is the right patient, the right wound type. Let me talk to the rep and see if I should put a, a, a sample down, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens if I call and this rep is not at a call center waiting for calls. They're out there yep. doing their job and they're not available. There's a decent chance that they're not going to be available yep. at that random moment when I as a clinician call. So then what? So we have this system called broadcasting where the companies put next to in the system, uh, next to each employee, they'll put three or four or 10 other employees oh. that have the same title, trained the same way, that can answer the same questions that that rep can. So the clinician in that instance will get an option automatically appears on the phone. Hey, it appears that your rep is not available. Do you want to text them or do you want to talk to the next available rep? And if they click that, the call goes out to 10 other people. And the first one that answers could pick up and say, hey, I'm Barry from Philadelphia. Sorry, your rep in Chicago 
you know, uh, Dr. Morgan was not available. How can I, how can I help you? So, you know, we asked the, the, the nurses, what if there were a system that always allowed for you to get in touch with your rep frictionlessly, whether you had a relationship where you knew them or not, they're just always there. And then the answers went from 28 percent yes to 50 percent yes so oh, it was a huge a jump in the numbers that said yes of the original ones that said yes i would contact you know my, my rep that shit down to several times a week to weekly and the ones who said nah i never do the 72 percent said yeah. i would contact them yeah. uh, several times a month right so we know that it's going yeah. to uh, foster more engagement uh, by the clinician just to have those quick and easy answers. You know, even if it's just five seconds or 15 seconds, it's super easy to contact your rep. And so you can get the information that you want when you want it. Yeah. Well, I don't know how many times, you know, when I was at bedside and I needed, you know, I have this new package I'm looking at. I'm like, I don't even know how to put it on a patient. Right. I remember when Tagaderm first came out years ago, you know, the see-through sticker, had all these tabs. I'm like, oh, I think I can figure this out myself. I blew through a whole yeah. box, which because <laughs> you know, I didn't do it right. It kept sticking together. Yeah. But you know, if I would have had backup. And that's the thing, you know, with, with clinicians in the field, as long as we got backup, we know where to go. We know that we can push a button and have access to those answers. That's all we really need because we don't have that anywhere. There's like nowhere that I know that we can tap in to quick information like that. You know, one of the things that, that we sort of learned as we were looking into this is um, there are a lot of portals that are out there. There are a lot of places that you can go to and search for a specific piece of information and find the right PDF and pull it down and read something that might be the, the answer that you're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. Those tend not to get used as often. The nature, human nature, is more instant Who's the person that I need to contact that's going to help me get that thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so we feel that we're knocking down that wall and it allows for the clinician to say, hey, can you send me the IFU for that product? Great. Mm -hmm. I need it in five minutes. Boom. And then you have it rather than going to have to find it somewhere. So exactly. that human experience is really what we're trying to drive. And, and just another thing, just because I've, I've been known to do this, you know, I'm looking on the Internet and on the internet, don't believe everything you see. I mean, there is a lot of fake news out there. And then even if I got into a YouTube channel, they're telling me how to do a product. I'm like, that's not right. They're doing it wrong. They're gonna cause harm to that patient and they'll be legally responsible. And we don't want that. So to have yeah. the right information at the right time, that's what we need to, um, the, and the accessibility. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and then on top of it, we're going to layer, you know, additional things. Um, we'll be bringing in distributors and DMEs uh, pretty soon. There's all sorts of information that that kind of might take a while to access. Um, you know, let's say when a patient is leaving a clinic uh, and you need to find the right DME that has the right insurance policy that sells these oh, yes. particular products, you know, things like that, you know, off-label requests, things that are done old world still in this brand new mm -hmm. digital world, we really want to be the platform that helps to consolidate those things and, and digitize them all and make them easy. Because at the end of the day, all the people watching this, all the clinicians, they are yeah. super busy. Well, I so appreciate yeah. them taking out some time, you know, in their day to even watch this. But when they're in the thick of it at work, they're incredibly busy. The last thing <laughs> they need to do is worry about how do I find the contact information for this person? And how do I know what's on contract there? Or what's the hick pick code for, for this thing over there? Mm -hmm. They're able to just shrink that down to seconds where they know yeah. they just click, ask the question, talk to the person. Thank you so much. See you later. See you next month. You know is mm -hmm. is kind of what we're driving at just to make their life their professional lives easier and uh and more efficient there's a couple comments that i see i'll just read them to you i don't know if you can see them one said we don't have time to sit down and listen you just said that <laughs> to every rep <laughs> we can get ours we can get our work we need to get our work done zoom has been a great way to get a group together to be able to teach our team and interact with reps so this is a great concept so that was um a gal out of wow. corpus christi texas um any well, and this is a good time any uh, anybody that's listening today anybody has any questions go ahead and post them i've got my phone in my hand i'm not playing a game while he's talking <laughs> i've got the phone in my hand and I'm reading as uh, we're going yeah, on yeah. here so um, let's see, we have Heather that said, I'm excited about this. 
I'm an RN, CWS, and still learning every single day. But my resources are so limited for things that I don't know to where to go most of the times. It's trial and error until I find a treatment regime that works. So, yeah, just clinicians backing it up. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. And also to, to, to mention to Heather, um, it's, a, it's, a goal, it's a goal of ours by the end of the year. Ultimately, vision wise, I'll just take one brief second and, and say it, not necessarily sure. critical to this audience, but it ties to something, the vision of, of, of VTAIL. We've selected product companies and clinicians and pairing them together and very specifically are focused in our launch market for wound care, right? Ultimately, you know, we're going to branch out. We're going to be in lots of different areas of healthcare. We're going to uh, orthopedics next and then dentistry and then a, and a bunch of other areas. But more importantly is the way that people think of like LinkedIn. You know, if you talk to someone and said, hey, where would you go today? to you know, see what jobs are available, to see who's working at one company and if you know anybody working at that company that can make a connection and just to network, pretty much everybody would say, I go to LinkedIn, right? Yeah. Um, we want, you know, in some matter of time, a year from now, two years from now, we want for uh, people to have in their hearts and minds about VTAIL, very much that quick sort of thought where if the question is with anybody, in the ecosystem of, of healthcare, especially when it comes to products. So innovators and founders, you know, whether they're sitting in a garage, you know, an office at a university or at some company, all the way through the clinical research uh, portion of, of a product life cycle through um, uh, commercialization, all the way through the last mile of delivery to a facility or delivery to, to a patient's home. We want all of those stakeholders to be connected in support of the healthcare uh, professionals and having them all be able to find, connect, and communicate with each other. And so we want for if the question is, hey, how do you find you know the right person to work on this project or to get information you know about this product or to see if there are any clinical studies that you know might be interesting for such and such. We want people to just the way they think of LinkedIn for those kinds of questions to think, oh, you just go to VTail, right? So that's kind of where we want to be. And in the, in that context, I want to say to Heather. Mm -hmm talking about resources and talking to people about how, you know, certain, maybe finding the right modality and the right treatment. By the end of the year, one of those components that we want to link is you to each other, right? We want to do peer to peer. And so that you will be able to, you know, as a member of VTAIL, only for the, for the actual MPI numbers, hands-on clinician, hands-on patient clinicians, they would have to uh, do it, go through a validation process since they're going to be talking about patient care to be able to find and connect with each other based on these clinical areas of interest, wound care, products, you know, if so, let's say some new product comes out, some new negative pressure, some small device, and, you know, I'm a clinician and, I, and, the, and the sales rep has been in for the last two months telling me about this new device, right? And I'm like, ah, they, it sounds the same as, as all the others, right? But there's something about it that sounds pretty interesting. Maybe I saw an ad or an article on, on, a, on a, and I saw a case series and it seems interesting. Right. But all I've heard about it so far is from the rep. I can go into VTAIL, not now, ultimately. I go into VTAIL, I go into this peer to peer channel where I could talk to, you know, other clinicians and I type in the name of that product and I see 15 other clinicians that have checked off that they're using this product already. And I could reach out to them and say, hey, will you mind, you know, talking to me for five or 15 minutes about your, you know, what you're seeing with this product? What do you use it for? What indications, good or bad? How is it different? Whatever. So we want to bring the world of wound care a little closer on the cl on the clinical side to each other uh, to more easily be able to, to network and, and have those uh, uh, conversations as well. Well, I like hearing that because that's what I'm all about too. That's what my focus is, is clinicians, giving clinicians things to do so they can go out there and, you know, do better with their patients and educate yeah. them, keep them in the know. So that's awesome. Absolutely. That would be wonderful, Miss Heather said. <laughs> right back to you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, can I ask? Um, and I, I don't think this was brought up yet, but HIPAA. Is there any concerns that I need to be concerned about in regards to HIPAA at all, or, or no? Or so, yeah. So, it, so the, the the one of the things that was delightful to me as a as a founder um, and, and and someone who you know I, I I'm not a software developer, and so I just didn't know the answer to this going into it was. Mm -hmm. how you know, the thing is supposed to be a video system. How are we going to build a video system? I have no idea how to do that. And it turns out that 
a lot of those things you could use by basically off the shelf. So there are software vendors out there that supply to all of the apps that, that, that you know and love, the chat, the, the image sharing, the phone calling, the video calling. And there's, I'm not going to say, maybe there are hundreds, but let's say tens and tens and tens of those. Okay. One of those is uh, named Twilio. And if you were to look them up, uh, you'd find that they're like a $60 billion publicly traded company. They are the behemoth of all, all of these. The reason for that, they have a, a consumer products suite of tools, you know, video and phone and all that stuff, but they have a HIPAA compliant suite of tools. So they are underneath and running a majority of these telehealth apps that are out there and also a mm -hmm. hospital, the hospital system have their own internal communication systems that need to be HIPAA compliant, use companies like Twilio, and we're using the same, uh, we're using the same thing as well. Okay, so no worries in regards to that. Yeah. So that would be Still cool. Like yeah. I was just, I'm trying to think of things that like other colleagues would ask me. Anybody else have any questions for Mr. Berry here? Um, no, but there, there is a comment from Roxana Arena. And she says, I've been in the OR and a patient under anesthesia, and I have a question about a product. Could save time and money and better patient care. Absolutely. From what it sounds like, she could get information even being in the OR, right? So, you know, um, interesting, interesting point. And again, slightly divergent from wound care, but so that you guys get well, the picture. Um, sure. We're some of our biggest investors, early investors, is a group of five neuro and, and spine surgeons. And oh. for them, it was interesting because, you know, market dynamics are so different from healthcare area to area. Wound care fragmented, lots of transiency. Who's the rep is, is a very common question. Neurosurgery, not so much. Not very mm -hmm. fragmented, tight market. They pretty much know who their rep is. But here's the thing, in mm -hmm. neurosurgery on Sunday, at 2.30 in the afternoon, you can have a stroke patient sitting right in front of you or laying, sadly, you know, right in front of you that you need yeah. to take care of. And the, then the rep would normally help the team know where everything is, how to set up what the kit that they need specifically for this surgery and is important. All of these surgical reps are very important to these surgeries. Well, if that rep is fishing, on his boat at 2.30 on Sunday, right? Then what? There is a process that's in place to find another rep, but it usually takes time. It's measured in tens of minutes before they'll have a rep on the phone. And as you know, with a stroke patient, tens of minutes is yeah. incredibly important. So with VTAIL, because of our broadcasting feature, it's seconds, right? That call goes out to a whole part of the organization and someone else will pick up and be able to handle, you know, that conversation uh, with the clinician and they know it going into it. So, you know, to the OR and the immediacy need of it. Yeah. That's one of the things that we really bring to the table is not only can you have direct contact, if your person's not available, it'll, it'll go yeah. to another person who is. That's good. So there's, there's always going to be someone backing that clinician up. That's good. They're not alone. That's important. Yeah. Um, is there anything that I know that, you know, this is a new company and everything. Is there anything that I myself and maybe even other clinicians that are listening now, can we do anything to help you? Because I know that when things like this happen, you know, you always get feedback from customers and stuff. Is there anything that we could even help in regards Absolutely. to that? Okay. Yeah. And, you know, um, and don't be surprised if you download the app and register, if at some point you get a, a personal, not automated, but email from me. Uh, saying I'd love to talk to you uh, for five or 15 or however many minutes you want to give because I'm thirsty for hearing from users, uh, mm -hmm. especially ones that I don't know, um, mm -hmm. what they think of, of the platform and what they would make different, what they like, what they don't like. You know, negative feedback for us at this stage is super important. Mm -hmm. uh, so the couple of things that I would say as far as uh, clinicians being able to help us, number one, download the app, have okay. experiences with it and let us know uh, what you think and tell your friends, right? Um, okay. we're, we're here in early days. And, and I would say go into it with the expectations. It's not, we don't have everything there just yet. Not every company is on. There are some companies that are on that they might not necessarily have a rep in your territory yet. So there's building that we need uh, to do and there's functionality. And like I said, we wanna get to peer to peer and do all these things. We're gonna build those over time. Uh, 
but we feel that we have enough hopefully on there that's uh, going to create a valuable and interesting experience uh, for clinicians. And we would love certainly for your forward thinking ones, download the app, have some experiences, interact with some companies and, and let us know uh, feedback. There's a feedback button that, uh, that they could find. And please do tell tell your, your friends. But the other thing that's super important, I think I might have alluded to it earlier, is if you don't see your company on here, if you see your company, but the rep that you know to be your local rep is not on there tell them or tell us hey help us get this company on here or tell your rep you know that they should mm -hmm. they should be on it because that kind of word of mouth ultimately with these brand new you know uh software services really is what is what drives them you know it's funny listening you know as, as a first-time founder in the software i listen to a lot of these uh podcasts my partner one of my uh, two partner uh, founders uh, there's phil and there's toby as well um is a big podcast guy and so uh he's he's really uh, tuned me into listening to a lot of these podcasts and it's amazing some of the um the most famous you know you know apps that that, that we know and love you know listening to their mm -hmm. stories the first year two years six months all the same all the same and word of mouth um, and connecting with people that you know and asking for them to, to help to, to just tell their friends and so on and so on. You know, it's like that old shampoo commercial, you know, and then they told their friends and then they told their friends. So that might be dating me a little bit. I apologize. But uh, and so on and so on. But, but, but that's super important to us and it would be really helpful. So thank you if you, if, if you guys could do that. In fact, you know, maybe uh, uh, Bill, if he could throw up the QR code, we can make it easy for them. Uh, yeah. Good idea. You know, we have this. Code. It's the same thing that you see in restaurants. If you just put your phone, the camera over that, it'll literally take you, whether you've got an Android or, or, or a, a, an iPhone, it'll take you right to the spot uh, in the app oh. store uh, where we are. Plus, you know, that QR code looks a lot better than I do. So that's probably the better thing to see right now. Okay. Got it. It came up. Nice. Did you guys get that? So that's right. great. I can that downloaded so why don't, why don't we, and, and by the way since since we're playing with pictures now and i haven't done it yet throw up the, sure. the screen and just so that they could see what those okay. look like these are automated generated companies these are not the wound care companies that we have uh, on there but that gives you a feel for what it is about how when they come into the app they'll see a list of companies again they're invisible at that point they get to choose themselves. I want to be with this one and this one, but not these other ones. And yeah, that one too. Once they do that, they'll then be able to see their personalized automated connections to those companies. And then they can text them, phone call them, video call them. Oh, one thing that I did forget to mention now that I'm seeing these screens, I knew there was a reason why I wanted to have it up there, um, is the news feed. So the other thing that we do, and it's all linked to this matching criteria thing is when you come in as a clinician, not only will you see the per the companies that are perfect matches for you, you'll also see a news feed that's a perfect match for you. Currently, the news feed is populated by those companies. So any company that's a match, you'll see their news feed. You won't see stories about politics or puppies that have been recovered, you know, from, you know, a sewer. So I watch all of those, by the way, it's terrible, but you won't see any of those on VTL. Only relevant um, stories that will relate and match to your registration criteria. These are the areas of, of clinical care that you're interested in. And ultimately on this news feed, we're gonna be embedding uh, stories that have CMEs attached to them. We're going to start very, very soon having clinicians, just like your clinicians who are listening, um, you know, uh, to this right now, they don't need to be, you know, the, the clinicians that are on the podium at SAWC every year, any mm -hmm. clinician to submit to us, we're calling them clinical minutes and just a video of them talking about product that they like, a way that they treat a, a difficult wound type, something that they just, you know, saw recently a problem that they're having with reimbursement, sort of, you know, whatever it is that they're interested in, we're building a clinical advisory panel um, that will be reviewing this information. Then we're just going to be posting it uh, up on the, uh, up, uh, up on the newsfeed. So the newsfeed itself will morph from just, you know, company posts to much more, uh, a mix of more engaging and, and vibrant uh, things as well. Nice. That's good. Let me see if there's any more questions here. Did we cover anything? Is there anything that we're missing, Barry, that um, you wanted to share with us as we're kind of closing it down here? Um, I think we covered most of the ground. 
you know? Yeah, um, I think so. We just kind of did it automatically. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Worked out well yeah. That way. Um, so those of you guys that are watching, you heard what Barry said, we can help them. And this is the time where we want to help companies. This is where we join companies. We help them. We give them feedback. We tell them to do how they can make it better. And by you doing that, that's going to make him do it better. And that's going to be better for all of us. And we can better take care of our patients. And so that's why I was really interested in it. Cause I thought, you know what, these clinicians need to hear about this. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, I mean, there, there, there's not too many times that you get to be part of building out a, a, a cool new app. And so if any of your viewers are really uh, interested in, in diving into it a little bit, uh, Bill, you can find my uh, contact uh, information up here as well. Um, if you'd really like to, we'd love to have you as part of our let's call it a testing team because we've got all of these functions and features that we're coding and developing and as we're in the process of doing that we're doing a couple of things number one is we're reaching out to users and potential users of which ones of these do you like and which ones of these would you use versus which ones do you not think are important and as we start to build them we show them this is what it's going to look like what do you think this is what we have so far is it easy and intuitive to use? Um, you know, this is it. Now it's done. You know, are, are, is this ready in your opinion to go to market? You know, so we will form these kind of user panels, tester panels, if you will. Um, and if any of your viewers would really like to sink their teeth into, into being, you know, in the early days of a, of a, of a cool new app, uh, they could contact me and, and we'd love to, 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 you know, you know, in, 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 um, interact with them as, as, as we make all of these decisions. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to help you. So I'm going to, I downloaded the app as we're talking Great. right now. And so uh, I'd like to be on that team and anybody else sure. is listening tonight that wants to be on the team, let's do it together. I mean, this is how we're going to change. A lot of people, you know, they go, oh, well, you know, I wish that they would make this change. Be the change you wish to see, guys. You want to see change, you be the change. Do it with me, you do it as a group and we'll make it really great for everyone. So awesome. I appreciate your time, Barry, I really do. Is there any final Thank words you. that you'd like to say? Before we say goodbye, wrap it up. Oh, boy, um, no. I to, other than thank you so much uh, for uh, your time and, and for the ability to, to get the message out. I really greatly appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you're doing. Um, I watched in, in awe as you built your last company. And I am absolutely a thousand percent sure you're going you're gonna to double and triple what you uh, accomplished last time. It's going to be fun to watch. It is going to be fun. Thank you. Hey, thanks everyone for um, watching this evening. Uh, thank you, Barry, for your time and spending with us. Thanks everybody. If you have any more questions, you can always put them down on the comments and we can get Barry to answer them for you. Not a problem. Um, thanks for joining us here at Wound Care Gurus tonight and we'll see you next show. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. <laughs>